What's up, Norberg Nation? How's it going? So over the holiday weekend, my dad and I were talking about the key moments in my career that turned me from like an average driver into a race winner. So as the days went on, I got to thinking and I remembered a few key moments that changed my career. So in today's video, I'm gonna share those moments and what they did to impact my career. And hopefully you guys can take these moments and learn from them and turn yourselves into winners. But before we get into that, please make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. It helps me out a lot knowing that you guys are supporting this channel and supporting the videos that I make for you guys. So now the first thing that I distinctly remember doing that turned me into a race winner was practicing with a coach slash other drivers. Now, I'm not talking about just doing laps on the racetrack with other drivers. I'm talking about practicing racing with other drivers. Your racecraft will only develop from experience on the racetrack. It's not something that you can just do laps and learn racecraft. You have to be around other drivers and around other carts to learn that racecraft. So the best and fastest way to learn that is by getting around other drivers and practicing with those drivers and practicing racing situations. So the thing that I did growing up was I would go to the Ocala Grand Prix. There's a lot of great drivers down there at the time. And so we would go and just do laps all day and practice racing. Now we weren't doing stuff for the memes or whatever, you know, these were actual solid laps where we tried to make like good passes, good race situation passes the entire time. And what it did was it moved my racecraft forward so quickly. I was able to practice all these different moves with a bunch of high level drivers and it helped me develop my skills without having to go to a bunch of races and spend a lot of time at different races. I also was able to work with some coaches here and there, but mainly I was using my competitors and the drivers that I was racing against as coaches. Now they weren't pulling me around the racetrack, showing me where to go around the racetrack. I was just able to use a trial and error method try some passes, see what works, see what didn't work. And we all had the idea that we were looking over our shoulder and making sure we weren't crashing. So it was a good, safe environment to learn racecraft. Now, the next big thing in my career that turned me from a good driver to a great driver is filling out a setup sheet. So when I joined PSL Karting at the first race that I ever did with them, they handed me a setup sheet to fill up after the session. So on the sheet, I obviously had to fill out everything about the setup, you know, where all the positions were, but at the very bottom of it, it asked me to describe the go-kart, to quantify in numbers where I was feeling certain things on the go-kart. Now, before this, I always viewed every corner as a whole. You know, I'd look at a corner and say, in this corner, I was understeering, but that was about it. When I joined PSL, they asked me to break the corner down into three separate parts entry, middle, and exit. This helped so much because I was able to understand what the root cause of every problem I had on the racetrack was. For example, I would originally come in and say the cart's understeer, but after sitting down and filling out this setup sheet, I was able to really understand that I was sliding on the way into the corner and then I'm understeering with the front tires because I'm trying to catch the go-kart as I get into the corner. This setup sheet helped change my mindset so much on how I looked at the racetrack and how I viewed my setup going through the corner. So by taking some time after the session and sitting down with my own thoughts and kind of replaying the session in my head and filling out that sheet really changed how I looked at a go-kart and looked at a racetrack. This took my opinions on the go-kart and how I viewed a setup of a go-kart to the next level. This elevated me so much higher in my career that I was able to always be able to pick up what's wrong with the cart and I'm much quicker at figuring out the problems with the go-kart. Another key thing that I did in my racing career that elevated me to a much higher level was I made a rule that I had to make one pass on the first lap. Now, I remember distinctly, there was a period of time where I struggled passing drivers. I would always get stuck behind a driver for sometimes 10 laps at a time, and I couldn't get by them. It was so frustrating to me because finally, once I made the pass and built up the courage to make the pass, I passed the driver and I gapped them by a few seconds and only a few laps. And what this showed me was that I need to be much more aggressive out the gate. I need to make a pass as soon as I see an opportunity. So for a period of time, I set a goal for myself, make one pass on the first lap. Instead of necessarily focusing on winning the race, I was focused on just making one pass at a time. 
On the first lap, my goal was to make one pass. What that taught me was to be aggressive out the gate. It taught me that as soon as the green flag drops, I need to be an animal. I need to be taking advantage of any opportunity that's presented to me. We're racing at super high speeds and we're making split second decisions. You have to be able to decide something as soon as possible. And if you're taking it easy on the first lap, it's so hard to start moving forward. This moment in my career, I started to understand also about the momentum and the flow of racing. It's so much easier to make a pass when you're moving forward in a race. It's so much harder to make a pass when you're moving backwards. And this is something I learned at this moment because as soon as I started making a goal to make one pass on the opening lap, this changed my mentality. I was way more aggressive at the start and now I have the confidence to make those aggressive passes on the opening laps if I need to make them. And now the next thing that I do is something that I learned pretty recently in my career and that is meditating before I go out for a race. Now I'm not talking about sitting in a corner and like zenning out. I'm talking about taking some time to separate yourself from all the distractions that are happening at the racetrack and focus on racing. I would notice this because before I was going out for a race, I'd always play on my phone for a while right before I walked up. And while this was helping me deal with my anxiety, it really wasn't helping the main problem. I was just pushing that anxiety 20, 30 minutes later, and then right before I go walk to the grid, now I'm getting bombarded with all this nerves and anxiety right before I go out on the racetrack. So to help with that, I decided that I need to take some time to just sit by myself and get away from the distractions of the racetrack. Instead of dealing with all that anxiety in a five minute span right before you go out for the green, I took that and stretched it out over a 30 minute period. And by the time I've walked to the grid, I'm in a much more calm and relaxed state because I'm not worried about those external outcomes. And then the last thing that I've learned, and this is over a long period of time, but it's to never believe in your own hype. And this is something that will forever remind you every time you fail in this area. What I mean by not believing your own hype, I'm not talking about there being a press release about you or some kind of article and you get like cocky because of this article or something. I'm talking about never believe that you're not gonna get beat. Now there's one thing having confidence in yourself and I full heartedly believe in having confidence in yourself and believing that you're a great driver, one of the best drivers out there. But being overconfident with yourself and believing that just because you're a good driver, you're gonna beat your competition, I think is a terrible idea. There are so many times that I can remember where I was like super relaxed, taking the race super easy because I believed I'm better than these drivers, I don't really need to try. In almost every situation, the race was way harder than it should have been and I ended up losing. You have to remind yourself that you have to be trying hard at every single race. You need to give every race that you're at 110%. Every time that I take it easy, I get beat. If you go to a racetrack that you've been at before and you're like, I don't really need to care this much, I'm always fast here, most likely you're gonna be slow this week. If you're racing a bunch of drivers that you know you beat all the time, what's gonna happen is they're gonna catch up and they're gonna beat you at some point. Every race that you're at, every time you're on the racetrack, you need to be developing new skills, working on your racetrack, trying to become a better driver every single time. You cannot take one race off. In my head, I always treat every race the same, from the Scusa Super Nationals to some local race, I'm gonna give it 110%. And by doing that, you're allowing yourself the ability to keep learning, and keep getting better. You're never complacent with your driver. You're always striving to be a better driver. So never buy into your own hype because you're the easiest person to sell it to. So there you have it. Those are five distinct moments in my career that I can always look back on and remember that those changed me from a regular driver to a winner. But that's it for today's video, you guys. Make sure to go buy some Norberg Nation merch. I'll put the link in the description below. Make sure to follow me on my Instagram, my Facebook, and my TikTok. I post a lot of awesome racing content on there as well, so make sure to follow those. Once again, like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. See you guys later.